Well, excuse me! From Studio C, at Dash Radio in Hollywood, California, this is Classic Rock, Classic Comedy on the Church of Rock and Roll channel. Uh, I'm your host, along with my co-host, Stephen Shahori. What up, my nerds? And uh, Patrick L. Puckett. Yeah. Eh, he's kind of busy right now. He's working the board. He's riding the faders. <laughs> and Linda G., who's... Yeah, you know, she's tied up. We she's, have a, she's trapped in a in a cavern. Her arm <laughs> is wedged in. Hey, we opened that. You know what? We opened that with Led Zepp again. That was their cover of Led Zeppelin's Heartbreaker. You know what? It, it's a great cover, and it makes me wish that Led Zepp again was actually in studio with us right well, now it, so we could it, chat it, with them. It just so happens that we have two of the members of Led Zepp again here with us. They were on with us. Uh, in our, our last show with the Beatles on Dash's 60s channel, and they're they're hanging around for this show. Here we have Jim Wooten. Good morning. Who is uh, John Paul Jones in Led Zepp again, and we have Swan Montgomery, who is Robert Plant. Good morning. How are you guys? Thanks for coming back, guys. Great, great. Yeah, thank you. Thank you Appreciate you guys having. being here. Thank we you. were talking a lot of story with you guys about uh, your your road gigs and. Yeah, you guys are fantastic. I got a chance to see you guys last Saturday night. Linda and I actually came up and saw you guys. And I was really, I mean, I knew you guys were good, but I didn't know you were that good. Oh, thanks. I really, I really, I'm, I'm being didn't know serious. you were Led Zeppelin good. This isn't like, I'm, I'm not hyping anything. It's really true. I was like totally blown away. I, I kept looking over at Linda like, oh, I can't believe this, you know? I mean, and and your, your lovely wife, Jim. Yes. Brenda is here, and uh, she was sitting with us, so she saw my reactions as well. And I tell you, what a, what a great show. Yeah, thank you. So we're all going to, we're all going to be able to uh, catch the shows because you are going to be in Southern California off and on, and we'll, yes. we'll try to catch shows. You guys are going to be touring. and uh, you, guys, you guys are all over the world. Um, yeah. Is it fair to say you are the premier Led Zeppelin tribute band? I know you might feel modest to say that, so I'm going to say it. You guys are the premier <laughs> oh, thank you. Led Zeppelin tribute band. Uh, you've got uh, a great following. You've got, you tour the world. Mm -hmm. And it's, as, as somebody who at the age of 47 was too young to have seen Led Zeppelin back in the day, closest I came was a Led Zeppelin laser show when I was 17 in the planetarium. Not the same thing. <laughs> Not the same. So I'm going to say you guys are at least five times better than Laser Zeppelin. <laughs> Yeah, I would, uh, I would vouch for and that. And you can use that quote on any further you know, press materials oh, that you, you use. And like we are talking about in the previous show, I mean, this is not simply just a weekend hobby for you guys. This is this is your, your deal. This is yes. your, your lifestyle. And is there a way to, and maybe this is a dumb question, to convey what that is like to folks who are, you know, simply clocking in doing a typical nine to five job? That's not what you guys have. No, not at all. <laughs> go, go ahead, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> Jim, it's on you. <laughs> yeah, I always tell people you can't have a better job than this. I mean, we're playing music that we absolutely love. And, and you know, the the crowds that we play for, they, you know, they, they treat us as if we were Led Zeppelin. Yeah, so, I bet. Uh, it's just an unbelievable thing to, um, well, first off, we've pretty much turned the work week around. We play on Fridays and Saturdays, and we have five days off. That's great. So, yeah, there you go. So. No, not really. There's a, there's a lot of work that goes. Oh, I would imagine. Do you guys have to rehearse a lot? I mean, you've been doing this a long time. I mean, it's not like, hey, Led Zeppelin just came out with a new album. we got to get like together. scramble. And, uh, no, uh, sometimes we just do it on the fly. Because we're touring so much, Yeah, and we're playing the songs all the time, it's, it's just there. And then somebody will come up with an idea, like, uh, let's do something off presence, and we all go into our own little corners and learn our parts, and then you don't maybe every, try it at, come together. at, at sound check, and off we go. Led Zeppelin song is that fair to say? Like every song, uh, if you ever open with Hot Dog, just <laughs> you know what? We're gonna just go right into Hot yeah, Dog, and we end with a custard pie. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like are there songs you just don't really end up doing, or or uh, have never done? We uh, there are some, um, mainly off of the Coda album. Yeah, I, I think there's like 86 songs in mm. the catalog, and we've probably played about 
73 of them, I think it wow, is. Wow, yeah. Right? Yeah, so so most of the, the songs we have performed. Now, you guys, uh, you guys, uh, Jimmy has seen you guys. Jimmy Page. Yes. Yeah. I yeah. mean, that, and, and also I saw a clip with uh, Jason Bonham sitting in with you guys. I mean, you guys have been, mm-hmm. uh, you know, had close touch with these guys. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. Well, we were playing at the House of Blues and Sunset, and um, the NAM show was going on at the time, and uh, Jimmy Page was in town, and a friend of his uh, suggested that he comes and checks this uh, tribute band out, Led Zeppelin. He ended up coming, and uh, we understand it was just sort of a, a brief. He was going to just come in, look at a song or two, and off he goes. But uh, he decided to stay for the whole set, mm. and then he insisted on meeting the band afterwards. So that was it. That was great. It's awesome. And we were on stage, and... Uh, I remember going to the guitar player, make sure you play this Cashmere right right now because uh, <laughs> Jimmy Page is looking at me. He's looking at me like, no. I says, yeah, oh, yeah, he's up there right now. He's looking at you. <laughs> and, oh, uh, my God. Then no, we were told no by pressure. the production, production manager, okay, um, finish your encore real quick. It was the quickest version of rock and roll we've ever done. <laughs> and uh, we got off the stage, and there's three or four Flights of stairs going up to the dressing room. So it was almost like going to stairway to heaven. It? it was like, it was like I, can, I sort of remember it. And it was like the mist, you know, was just clearing. And then you just yes. see, there he is. Yeah. It was like that, you know. And um, But when you actually meet the man, he was just so down to earth and easygoing. He spent, the time he was speaking to me was him trying to convince me that he was Irish. So I thought that was interesting. He's trying to impress you. <laughs> He's trying to impress me. Uh, so, uh, but no, he was great, right, Jim? Oh, yeah, he was so nice. And, and he was so complimentary. You know, he, he says, um, he says, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't like you guys were just playing the songs. He says, it was like you were inside of the music. Right. And the guitar player said, well, yeah, we, we've heard him a few times. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, you know, it could have been, it's that whole thing about not meeting your heroes. And I, I've met certain people that I've really admired in the industry yeah. over the years. And it's always, almost always been a good experience, thankfully. Yes. But, I mean, could you imagine if this alternate timeline where, where Jimmy Page is like, I don't like what you guys do. I thought you were crap. <laughs> What would that have done to you? Would it oh. just be like fold it up and be like, well, how how do we go on? That would have been tough to deal with. I'll tell you. <laughs> and, and I would say thankfully, but obviously it's, you know, a testament to, to your talent as, yeah, as a yeah, band yeah. that you guys wowed this fellow and uh, he, yeah. he felt you were holding well, we, the mantle pretty well. From the time that I started in the group uh, with um, the guitar player and the, the drummer, I think we, we just said above all, we want to play this stuff as close to the record as we possibly can. We don't want to throw our own spin on it at all. We want the people to hear it exactly like they heard it on the record. And so, that's, a, that's a challenge because yes. they do want to hear that. They want to hear the studio. Right, exactly. Well, yeah, they, because uh, there's a lot of pressure on the tribute dance to, to perform the music as close to the record, although then you've got the other you know, 20% of Zeppelin fans who want to hear the the live stuff where they jammed for, you know, yeah. 20 minutes yeah. on Days right. and Days of Confused and yeah. stuff like that. I was yeah. just going to say Days of Confused. That thing went on and on. And, on, and so yeah. on, how do you reconcile it when you're trying to do a very committed version of what we hear on the album? But then Led Zeppelin fans who are familiar with their live performances also know that Robert Plant sometimes would have a different vocal cadence you know what I mean? Like he, he would yeah. do this differently and sometimes he would he well, would sing it an octave lower, whatever he would do. Do you try and find a way to reconcile those two things or? What we try to do is we come up with some concept shows. Yeah. For instance, uh, we played in Japan and Tokyo and uh, we did the complete song remains the same. So I could not sing it like the record. I had to go and. You're doing live plants. I so had to, to do live, which uh, is sort of, <laughs> you know, like My opinion of it was like, would do certain things, well, you know? I don't like this version, but that's what they want to hear. So right. you you just go that way. And and they, they appreciate it. You know what I'm saying? No matter what you think, it's it's making the fans happy. And that's really what it's about. Right. You know? So, But we do a different con. We've done uh, Earl's Court, and where we've had to adapt and play uh, long extended versions as well. So, But we do find that most of the time people do lean towards the records. You know, right and and no mercy spared. If you do not play it right, or I don't hit a note, 
<laughs> you're, you're, you're going to the gallows pole. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs>